beautiful. I love what you've done to the place there. Thank you. I did myself. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> These really, are permanent, really nice. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> How are the cats? How are the kittens? Everybody's great. I mean, you can't go wrong with kittens, right? No, no. Thank you for sharing those pictures recently. My, my, them all, by the way. And the bees, <laughs> did you ever carry through your plans for the bees? Are you, <sighs> are you just swamped with honey now? <laughs> no, actually, we've had to move to plan B involving the bees because ah. the yard's not big enough for them. We hope to be riding shotgun with some beekeepers yeah. and just, you know, so we can use the bee suits that we bought. But uh, it's going to be a while before we have our own hives. But but we've got some friends who would like to have hives on their property. Uh, but we've been distracted with a few other things that um, I'd like to share with you later in the show. Oh, yes, please. You know, I've been distracted all year long. We had a great year. We put out hundreds of segments of the radio show, but the distractions come from all those phone calls, thousands of phone calls all year long. The voicemail box is always full. Uh, mm -hmm. We listen to everything, by the way. The email box is overflowing. It is bursting at the seams. It's like a cartoon suitcase that, you know, they're always <laughs> strapped really tight and clothes are hanging out, you know, and things are falling out uh so many lovely emails where people are sharing their memories and their stories and their thoughts and their ideas sometimes taking us to task if they disagree and that's fine too in fact i've got an email that i can't wait to share with you it comes from young kutzebel who is a school principal in the czech republic and young writes i listen to your show quite often usually when walking to the school i even have a place that i call chineski's place this is the place <laughs> where his <laughs> Isn't that great? This is the <laughs> place adorable. where his, his quiz always begins since it comes more or less at the same time from the start of the show. And anyway, Yun was responding to the conversation that we had about helicopter parents, you know, those parents who kind of hover over their kids and are really involved in their lives. And we talked about the fact that in Danish, there's a term that translates as curling parents. And the idea is that these are parents who, as in the sport of curling, are in front of the kids, you know, <laughs> sweeping things out of the way uh, to make the oh, kids' lives Oh, that's lovely. Easier. You know, we have to talk about this on the show, Martha. We have to share this with everyone. This, that's lovely. <laughs> so this big block is moving down the ice and the parents are frantically brushing in front of it. I love it. That's, that's, that's a perfect image. Isn't it great? It's called curling foreldre or something like that in, in <laughs> Danish. But I, Jan said that he and his wife, Sharka, decided that they're neither of those, that they're golf parents. Ah, so you kind of, uh, you know, set your sights on a distant hole, push the kid in that direction towards the hole in the flag and just hope that it, yeah, I don't think they're actually hitting their children, but it's a gentle push right. towards the flag, right? And then you trudge right. after them. There's, the children are speeding away and you're just like, plong, uh, yeah. probably don't even have a cart yeah. <laughs> carrying your own clubs. because Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you yeah that's a really nice go. metaphor. <laughs> yeah, as a, you know, as a father of a 13 year old, they... I'm 50. He's 13. He's he's got me beat on speed, and pretty soon he's gonna pass me in height. Can you believe that little guy is now gonna pass me in height? Probably this year. He's little 13. Guffey is he's close to what six feet now? Yeah, nearly six. He may even be over six feet. I haven't measured him. The Christmas tree is in the way of the bookcase where we put the marks. So after we take the tree down, we'll, we'll put another pencil mark on there and see where he stands. Yeah, well, as you know, Grant, almost exactly a year ago, I became stepmom to a couple of wonderful young men in their 20s. So I've been enjoying that all year, but I've also been involved in raising a few other, um, shall we say, creatures. And I'd but love not bees to tell you this time. <laughs> not, not bees. Those were Ooh. my gateway bug. But um... <laughs> you've always got some bug, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's watch this video and see what she's been up to now. One of the most rewarding things my spouse and I did this year was to rescue and raise two litters of feral kittens. We kept two of them, including this guy. Then we rescued a feral caterpillar. A monarch caterpillar. I'd always been fascinated by the monarch's life cycle, 
The caterpillar spins this bright green chrysalis, and inside, its body breaks down into a kind of chemical soup. In a matter of days, all of that reconstitutes into a butterfly. So when we found a caterpillar crawling on our front door, I was thrilled. We brought it out and put it on this milkweed plant. Within hours, there was a brilliant chrysalis hanging from that leaf with the caterpillar inside. The next day, though, the leaf had fallen to the ground with the chrysalis still attached. A fall like that can be fatal. Even if the butterfly manages to develop and emerge, it still has to hang free for a while to dry and expand its wings. So after some frantic research, we brought the whole thing inside and taped it to the bottom of this bookshelf. A few days later, the chrysalis turned clear, which meant that the butterfly could emerge at any second. We raced outside with the shelf and set it across two chairs. What happened next was astonishing. The newly hatched butterfly hung around for a couple of hours and then flew off. That process of emerging is called eclosion. This word goes back to the Latin claudere, meaning to shut. It's a relative of claustrophobia, and close. No one knows for sure why we call it a butterfly. Perhaps it's from the buttery yellow color of many European butterflies, or from an old belief that these insects like to eat butter. In fact, the German word for butterfly, schmetterling, derives from schmetten, a German word that means cream. Many cultures associate butterflies with the souls of the dead. The ancient Greek word psyche means soul or breath of life or self. It's the source of our own word psyche and psychology. But the Greeks also used psyche to mean butterfly. Watching this transformation up close, from humble caterpillar to magnificent flying creature, It's easy to see how we humans would come to think of the butterfly as a symbol of new beginnings and the miracle of metamorphosis. Those were lovely, Martha. How amazing that you got to see that in your own home. It was it was astonishing, really. I mean, if if you think about what what really happened and I'd heard about that all my life. And this was the first time that I'd ever gotten to see it up close and personal. And I, and I feel like I had a little role in rescuing it from the ground, you know, and making sure that it had that room to, to go through its eclosion. <laughs> go through its eclosion. Yeah. I got to find vocabulary in all of life, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and of course you, you got to find metaphor too. And I think about the end of 2020 and, and moving into 2021 mm-hmm. and, and just how I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to have some kind of, I don't know, worldwide eclosion where we all just emerge yeah. <laughs> brand well, new the- and, the arrival of all these vaccines looks like good news. Uh, mm-hmm. A fresh year is often time for a fresh start where we all make new commitments to our loved ones and to our communities. And so maybe more of us will do that this year and vow to change the world around us. And 2021 will be uh, a sharp contrast to 2020. What do you think? Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. By the way, somebody who's made a big difference around here, I've got some pictures from her. Here are some butterfly pictures from our producer, Stephanie Levine. Look at these. Aren't these gorgeous? Stephanie, by the way, you've seen her name. You've heard us talk about her. She is one of the three people, the triumvirate, that uh, is the core of Away With Words and the little nonprofit that runs it, produces it. Stephanie is what I call our tiny dynamo. She, uh, if, if I can't do it, and Martha can't do it, then Stephanie can. <laughs> There's, uh, <laughs> we can't do it without her. So uh, thank you, Stephanie. We love you very much. And thank you for these photos.
Grant, we got another great email. This one from Northern Ireland. It's from Nick. And you may remember Nick because he called us to talk about the term crack. Oh, yeah. Good that's crack. right. Yeah. It means great fun in right. Irish English, right? And he wanted yeah. to know about the origins of that. But now I saw that email. He's back in Ireland and that's where he's, uh, he's hunkering down for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to ask us about emojis. He says, do you recognize emojis now as a part of international language? Uh, I struggle sometimes to understand what they really mean. And he wants to know who sets the standards, who sets the definitions for emoji. Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, let's talk about emoji in the first place. Uh, do you use a lot of emoji, Martha? I think I remember you saying that it took a while for you to adopt them and really make them a part of your everyday communication. I don't use that many, but uh, there are a few that keep turning up in my texts again and again and again. Certainly a heart, uh, certainly a smiley face, certainly a laughing face. And um, I guess I say a lot of things that that uh, require a, uh, a goofy <laughs> face too. Lots of jokes. You know, but yeah, yeah, but that's that's pretty much it. Now, you were a latecomer to Emoji, right? You were kind of, not that you disliked them, but you were reluctant. I, I think I remember you saying you weren't quite sure where they fit into your world of communication, all the things that you needed to say. Yeah, I felt like I could just use, you know, words, written right. words. Um, but, <laughs> That's our but trade, some... right? <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but sometimes uh, a well-placed Emoji, I think, is a nice little kicker. Yeah, there, exactly. That's a good word for it. There's an explanation for this, for what emoji do and emoticons before them. You can date me as a Gen Xer because I still use a fair number of emoticons. Emoticons being the little faces and symbols, the uh, little scenes that you can make out of punctuation. And they predate the internet by quite a, quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, but they add something back into the language. This is called paralinguistic restitution. I've, I've been talking about this for a long time. And it's kind of satisfying to have a term for that. What it means is that they're putting back into the written language something that is already in the spoken language. We can do things with our hands and our faces mm -hmm. uh, and our bodies, gestures and movements that you can't do in the written language. The written language is a poor facsimile of the spoken language. The spoken language is the original language. And the written language struggles to keep up and struggles to really do all the things that the spoken language does so well. You might think, oh, well, the spoken language is messy, but the spoken language is in some ways better. Uh, it's, it's more perfect. And the written language, you know, there's a reason you have to teach it because it doesn't come naturally to us. And so this paralinguistic restitution restores to the language thing. So I can put in a, an emoji at the end of a sentence and you immediately know I was kidding. Or I can put an emoji at the beginning of a sentence and you know that uh, I have feelings for you, <laughs> right? You know that what's coming after is a, is a come on or a, I'm asking you out, you know? Or you know that um, what I said wasn't sarcastic, that I meant it genuinely. All of these things might be take 10, 15, 20, 100 words to write, an emoji will do the one job. You know, last week I had the good luck, uh, as I have for 20 or more years, to hang out with the American Dialect Society doing the Word of the Year vote. We did our first virtual Word of the Year vote. And one of the categories this year, as in some of the past years, was Emoji of the Year. Now, the overall Word of the Year was COVID. You know, there were that's kind of, you know, that's not a bad choice. But I want to focus on this subcategory of Emoji. The ones that were in the category this year, well, the winner overall was ta -da -da -da, the mask emoji, the face with the med medical mask. And it's a perfect for 2020, right? The other one was the two fingers touching emoji, which is kind of like used case shyness or he hesitation or pleading. And combining mm -hmm. that with the pleading eyes, it might be kind of a, a beseeching thing. The two of them together, it's kind of like, is that for me? You know, somebody says, uh, you know, I have a I have a free PS5. And you're like, you put those two in the chat. Can I have it? <laughs> it just means, you know, I, I really want it, but I'm trying not to be too so bold as to demand it. You know, the number two runner up, though, wasn't an emoji. It was the new Facebook symbol, the emoji with the hugging heart. 
used mm-hmm. on Facebook for the care reaction. Now, this gets us to one of uh, one of Nick's other questions, like who decides? Well, there is part of the Unicode consortium has a committee that accepts proposals for new emojis and they they read the proposals and they vote on them and they discuss them and talk to the communities that are involved and consider the different art and the way that it might be visually displayed and, and are there ways to abuse it, that sort of thing. And then they might add it and decide to go ahead and add it into the Unicode and then various t- topography type foundries and organizations may add it and makers of operating systems may add it. And then after a while, a year or so, you may be able to type it out on your keyboard of your phone or your laptop and and use it to get a point across. So mm-hmm. is it a new language? No. Is it a kind of communication? Yes. Will it replace English? No. Do we need to worry about it? Absolutely not. Is it doing a job? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is it fun? Of course. Do you need to worry that somebody's the world is being overtaken by emojis and that it's destroying English? No. <laughs> there are bigger things to worry about, certainly yeah. for 2020 and probably yeah. for much of 2021. So let's just enjoy the fun of emoji. And I think Nick is of that mind as well. He seems we know him from having him on the show and from his previous emails that he's a fun guy. And uh, he, he even signs off with the prayer hands emoji. So I think Nick is on board. Emoji yeah, that was handy. So. Yeah, that one is very handy. Yeah. You use that either to generally mean prayers or I'm praying for you or like that's also the the very heartfelt please. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can you give me a ride to the airport, please? You put the prayer hands emoji. <laughs> right? Polysemy in emoji. <laughs> yeah, polysemy having more than one meaning. Hey, Grant, the tide's coming in. I'm going to have to go in a second here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, don't get your don't get your new shoes wet, Martha. All right. Um, I'm already rolling up my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring me some crab or some clams or whatever you find out there. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> One of the advantages <laughs> of being based here in San Diego. Yeah, I'll send you some lemons in exchange right off the tree in Great. my yard. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. You know, sour, we could, we could yeah. Do the, yeah. Let's have a, let's have a distanced uh, seafood dinner, maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. stone soup. You bring the lemons and I'll bring the, whatever I find down here. At the <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> we want to thank everyone for watching this and we want to thank you for your donations that support the show. We can't do this show without listeners support and listener donations. Happy new year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Grant. Happy New Year, Bye, everybody. Martha. Take care. Give everyone Bye, a Grant. squeeze for me. <laughs> Will do. You too.